Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the heavenly backyard garden and the planets are beginning to come into view, particularly the gas giants. You got uh, Saturn now rising almost at sunset and Jupiter is about an hour and a half to two hours behind and also in between those two are the uh, Uranus or Uranus and Neptune. So you want a long focal length telescope to capture the planets and this telescope here is the Celestron 11 inch Edge HD. It has a focal length in its native stage of 2,800 millimeters. That's a large, long focal length. Uh, that's an F10 on the focal ratio. You need at least an F10, uh, even an F12, even F15 if you can, uh, for the planets. The, uh, the larger the F ratio, the better off you're going to be for planetary imaging. However, <laughs> The longer the focal length and the longer or the uh, higher the focal ratio, the more difficult it is to find your target and to uh, center in on the target and to track. Uh, for deep space objects, you know, F7 down to F5, F4, even F2 is ideal for that and you get much easier tracking. But with the F10, uh, this is the scope. I have it on the CGX mount. Now, this is editing Pat with breaking news as I'm editing this uh, the video for the astronomy channel a uh, hurricane is approaching my area so i've been very busy on producing videos for the weather conditions for my region here i am right over in here and here's the hurricane in question that is idalia and that's moving up right toward my area so in the process i am taking down my telescopes and storing them in dry areas to prevent them from wind damage and any rain damage associated with this storm all right i just want to let you know what's going on around here in savannah back to the video recently i uh, uh, added new equipment to the celestron 11 inch edge hd i bought the new celestron uh, metal dew shield I also purchased the dew heater ring. That replaces this ring that holds the uh, corrector plate in place on the uh, top of the scope right here. And you just simply take this off and replace it with the dew heater ring. And then the connector is right here. You have the uh, 12 volt connector and also a thermistor in there that measures the uh, temperature and humidity. So it knows when and uh, how much power to apply to the uh, dew heater ring and also uh, it's controlled through this uh, uh, Celestron four port controller. It also has the three USB ports so I can plug in my cameras and the uh, uh, auto guider and the uh, uh, whatever else I need, uh, the auto focuser. With that I also added the Celestron Star Sense auto guider. Now I had a Star Sense in the past and it would align the telescope nicely but this is also a guider. Uh, it has a, a guide scope built into it and it has a mini computer inside of it and that supposedly gives you better guiding throughout the night. I put that to the test and I think that's right. I'm getting better guidance. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And also I do have the uh, Celestron auto focuser. So everything is controlled through this hub and then that's connected to the computer which I have down here and then remote connected to upstairs to my main computer where I operate from inside and I operate it through the software called CPWI. Now you can operate it through your hand controller, but that's, I mean, that's a, well, let's just say to me, a challenge. Uh, CPWI is much easier to use and it controls the telescope very well. Uh, and, and you can set your targets up and go to your targets. I'm gonna show you that too. So all of that is connected to this uh, telescope here. So the objective here, right now is to use this telescope to capture the planet. So with that being said, let's go upstairs to the unboxing of the Star Sense Auto Guider and see just what's in the box and what comes with it and how to mount it on the scope. All right, let's open this box up. Let's see what we got. All right, open it in the box. I'm betting there's another box inside this box. Well, no, not really. There's my high point scientific receipt. A lot of paper packaging. Okay. There's the box within the box right there. Pull this one out. Okay. So here we have it right here. They 
This is the uh, Celestron StarSense Auto Guider. All right, let's open it up. All right, and sure enough, there's a box inside the box. Okay, that makes sense. See if I can get this out. Nothing in there. All right, here you have it. The StarSense Auto Guider. This will hook on to my Celestron 11 inch Edge HD with the Celestron CGX mount. And this should also work on any Celestron mount. I also have the uh, CGM mount as well. All right, let's look in the inside of this box, break the seal. Oh, I see, it goes this way and then upside down this way. There we have it. Packing. When all else fails, read the directions. All right, okay. All right, what's in the box right now? Let's see, let's pull this out. First of all, here's the, one of the cradles. Uh, this is probably going to be the one I use. This has a uh, standard shoe, actually goes this way. It'll fit into uh, an eyepiece holder or a small auto guide um, scope. Uh, I can just slip it right in on that. Okay. Uh, we got, oh good, we got mounting screws and the screws for the scope itself. I need these two black screws. I'm missing them. I might be able to use the other one. Okay, the other standard mount, which is this one right here. Well, everything's packed. Oh, it says all, all one unit. Okay, I see. All right, open up this bag here. And this is it. Also, we got our ST4 cable, uh, which we'll need to connect that to the uh, mount itself. Okay, all right. So there it is. There's the auto guider. This is an auto guide telescope, and the auto guider here with the star sense uh, for calibrating the uh, scope and then guiding uh, throughout the night. Uh, there's a small computer inside of this system right here. Now let's take a look at, at the lens itself. There it is. There's the, uh, the lens inside uh, of the scope uh, that will be used for auto guiding. Now the theory behind this is that this will do an excellent job on guiding the CGX mount or any Celestron mount for that matter. But uh, we're going to put it on the I'm going to put it on the CGX mount. And this is the uh, uh, standard uh, uh, mounting system. Uh, you, it goes right on the mount. I'll be showing you that in just a minute. And then we have the tightening screws, which are over here in this bag. Let's see here if I can get it open. It seems like the small, smaller the bag, the harder it is to open. Okay. Well, I got another Allen wrench too. That's nice. Um, anyway, these are the locking screws. And they just go on like so. And once you got the uh, scope on the, once you got the mount on the mount, then you set this up. And it's not going anywhere. There you go. All right, let's go outside and put this baby on the scope itself. One other thing that's very important, uh, it's very uh, important to make sure that the telescope is balanced properly and balancing it with all the equipment that you have that you're gonna be using for the night. For example, I have the right ascension balanced. Now it's just almost perfectly balanced. Uh, you want to balance it with the dew shield on and your camera on and everything else attached that you're going to be using for the night. But as you can see, it's, it's fairly well balanced. Um, so that, that, that's good. Uh, that's going to help with the tracking. Also, uh, for the declination, you want to make sure that's balanced. Now, I have a planetary camera on it at the moment, the Player One uh, Uranus C uh, camera. And it's a lighter camera. There it is right here. And I could move the scope up a little bit 
further back, I suppose, to balance it. But moving this scope up and down on the rack is uh, is rather difficult. If you can get away without moving that, that's a good idea. And what I did is I put a little counterweight on the back here to help add weight to the back of the uh, uh, system. And it's it's mostly balanced. It's close, um, particularly uh, here. You can see it's it's fairly close. And that will help with the tracking as well. The declination is not as important as the right ascension. Uh, the right ascension, you've got to have that right on the money. Let's take a look at the uh, test from the uh, other night that I did with the Dumbbell Nebula. This is the 62nd uh, test with the uh, StarSense Auto Guider. Guiding being on, as you can see, it did a pretty good job there. Uh, had some thin clouds passing overhead, so there's a little bit of a blur sometimes. Uh, in the uh, stars themselves. Here's the two minute uh, version. Again, pretty good, pretty good. It was tracking very, very well. This is with the uh, ZWO ASI 071 camera and uh, uh, had a little doing on the sensor here. But overall, you can see uh, even at three minutes, the tracking was great. This remembers that F10 on the um, uh, Celestron 11 inch telescope. Uh, usually if I get tracking beyond two minutes, I'm jubilant. Uh, here is a, what we got here? Four minute, uh, look at that. Four minute guiding here. Four minute exposure. Uh, looks very, very good. How about five minutes? Uh, looks great to me. Uh, it was tracking this night, that's for certain. I had the mount perfectly balanced too. That helps a lot. And this is, I'm pushing it now, um, six minute exposure. No, seven minute exposure. I'm getting a little bit of eggshells now here, egg, egg shape rather, um, as you can see. Um, so, you know, I'm pushing it, I mean, come on. Seven minutes here on an F10. Uh, and this is the uh, eight, nine minutes, nine minutes here. And yeah, it, it's, it's getting carried. It bounced a little bit too, but overall, I mean, come on, it, it was, wasn't bad at all whatsoever. Uh, when you look at it, uh, a three um, hundred second or five minute exposure came out very well uh, with that. But most of the time with the um, 11 inch, I don't do more than three minutes, like right here, 180 seconds. And usually it's two minutes uh, for the exposure time because there's so much light coming in uh, with that big uh, 11 inch mirror in there. Uh, it works out very, very well. So the StarSense Auto Guider is doing a very good job in tracking. I never got tracking this well uh, with my other systems. Well, a lot of the dismal weather is over for us, and we're getting some clearer nights now, and the humidity is still very high, but it's beginning to drop. And our temperatures have been in the mid to upper 90s, but not those hundreds and 110 like they have out in uh, Arizona and Texas and Kansas and Oklahoma, uh, even in Spain and uh, portions of Italy where it's been extremely hot over there. Anyway, my sky is clearing off. The conditions are getting pretty good here. Bearing any hurricanes that come and visit our area, I'm hoping to get some good uh, tar uh, astronomical targets over the next several weeks. And I'll be sharing them with you right here on my YouTube channel, so keep watching. And if you'd like to support this channel, go right ahead, please help me support my channel. Uh, you can buy me a cup of coffee. You know, I love my coffee when it's a little bit cooler and or you could uh, join my channel uh, or you could uh, uh, join my patreon page all this the links in below right here uh, you can go there and also if you like this video you know hit the like button and if you like to ha have any comments please leave your comments as well those are very important uh, for that youtube algorithm to help uh, boost these uh, videos out to other people that are not uh, subscribed to this channel and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. I do a lot of astrophotography, uh, astronomy video out here in the garden. And on the garden and weather, I have another channel, my weather and nature page, where I do uh, updates on the weather and on the garden. Right now, it's a lot of updates on the weather, uh, particularly with the hurricane season now beginning to get into full swing. You can see my uh, uh, weather channel videos there on my Pat's weather and nature page. There you can see uh, the links to that right there. So. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, and it's all available in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.